This video is about two-factor analysis of variance with repeated measures. If we look at the most common types of analysis of variance, we distinguish between one-factor and two-factor analysis of variance, and on the other hand, analysis of variance without measurement repetition and with measurement repetition. This video is about the two-factor analysis of variance with measurement repetition. This brings us right to the first question. What do I need two-factor analysis of variance with measurement repetition for? Two-factorial analysis of variance with measurement repetition tests whether there is a difference between more than two samples divided between two variables or factors. In contrast to the two-factorial analysis of variance without repeated measures, one of the factors is created by repeated measures. So one factor results from a dependent sample. But what is the difference to the normal one-factor analysis of variance with repeated measures? The single factorial ANOVA with repeated measures tests whether there are statistically significant differences between three or more dependent samples. Now what is a dependent sample again? In a dependent sample, the measured values are connected. Thus, one and the same person is measured at several points in time. If, for example, a sample of people suffering from high blood pressure is drawn and the blood pressure of these people is measured before therapy, in the middle of therapy and at the end of therapy, then this is a so-called dependent sample. This is the case because one and the same person was, for example, interviewed at several points in time. So you might be interested to know if therapy for high blood pressure has an effect on blood pressure. Therefore, you would like to know if blood pressure changes over time. But what if you have different therapies and you want to check if there is a difference between them? Now you have two factors, once the therapy and once the measurement repetition. Since you have two factors, and one of the factors is a dependent sample, you use the two-factor analysis of variance with repeated measures. With the help of the two-factorial analysis of variance with measurement repetition, you can now answer three things. First, whether the first factor with the measurement repetitions has an influence on the dependent variable. Then, whether the second factor has an influence on a dependent variable. And finally, you can also make a statement whether there is a so-called interaction effect between two factors. With that, we can now move on to the hypotheses. As already mentioned, you can test three statements with the two factorial analysis of variance. So there are also three null hypotheses and therefore also three alternative hypotheses. The first null hypothesis is the mean values of the different measurement times do not differ. There are no significant differences between the groups of the first factor. Then of course, there is the second one. The means of the different groups of the second factor do not differ. And the third null hypothesis reflects the interaction effect. One factor has no effect on the effect of the other factor. But what are the assumptions now? Well, the scale level of the dependent variable should be metric. For example, salary or blood pressure. The scale level of the factors should be categorical. The measurements of one factor should be dependent for example, the measurements should result from repeated measurements of the same person. The measurements of the other factor should be independent. So the measurement of one group should not be influenced by the measurement of another group. 
The variances in each group should be approximately equal. And finally, the last requirement, the data within the groups should be normally distributed. Now let's look at an example and I will show you how to interpret the results. Let's say this is our data that we want to analyze. Each row is one person and here we have the first factor with the three time points before the therapy, in the middle and at the end of the therapy. And here is the second factor indicating which therapy was used. So is it therapy A, B or C? So in our example, the first patient received therapy A, had a blood pressure of 165 before the therapy, in the middle a blood pressure of 145 and at the end a blood pressure of 140. Now let's first calculate the example online with DataTab and then we will discuss how to interpret the results. To calculate a two-factor analysis of variance with repeated measures online, just visit datadep.net and copy your own data into this table. Then click on Hypothesis Testing. Under this tab you will find a lot of hypothesis tests and depending on which variable you click on, you will get an appropriate hypothesis test suggested. If you copy your data up here, the variables will appear down here. If the correct scale level is not automatically detected, you can simply change it under Variables view. For example, if we click on Before, Middle and End, an analysis of variance with repeated measures is automatically calculated. But we also want to include the therapy, so we just click on Therapy. Now we get a two-factor analysis of variance with measurement repetition. We can read the three null and the three alternative hypotheses here. And then we get the descriptive statistics output. Here we see the results of the analysis of variance. We'll look at these again in detail in a moment. But if you don't know exactly how to interpret the results, you can also just click on Summary in Words. But now back to the results. Most important in this table are these three rows. With these three rows, you can check if the three null hypotheses we formulated before are retained or rejected. The first row tests your null hypothesis, whether blood pressure changes over time, so whether the therapies have an effect on blood pressure. The second row tests whether there is a difference between the respective therapy forms with respect to blood pressure. And the last row checks if there is an interaction between the two factors. You can read the p-value in each case right at the back here. Let's say we set the significance level at 5%. If our calculated p-value is less than 0.05, then the respective null hypothesis is rejected. And if the calculated p-value is greater than 0.05, then the null hypothesis is retained. Therefore, we see here that the p-value of before, middle and end is less than 0.05 and thus the before, middle and end times are significantly different in terms of blood pressure. The p-value in the second row is greater than 0.05. Therefore, the types of therapy have the same mean values over time. It is important to note that the mean value over the three time points is considered here. It could also be that in one therapy the blood pressure increases, in the other therapy the blood pressure decreases, but on average over the time points, the blood pressure is the same. Then we would not get a significant difference here. If this was the case, however, we would have an interaction between the therapies and the time. We test this with the last hypothesis. In this case, there is no significant interaction effect between therapy and time. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.